That was really nice of you to stand up. Thank you so much. That was incredible. How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, thank you so much for coming to this. This is so, so wonderful of you to want to be here. Um, I just want to thank Lana for all the work that she put into this. And um, we started the process not really knowing um, if we were going to end up with a documentary. It was just sort of like, let's film, let's see if, let's see if, let's see what you see. And this was completely in her hands. And I really appreciate all the, you know, all the hours we talked, those interviews. There were a lot of hours that she had to hear me talk about my feelings. So, um, thank you. Thank you so much for everything you are, all the work you put in, all the thought and care and empathy you put into what you do. Thank you so much. It was a total honor for me to get to film with you during what ended up being a really transformational chapter in your life. And I think one thing that was so surprising to me is that there are so many things that anyone can relate to. I think that we're all on social media now, we're all living publicly in some ways. We all want people to like us, and we're all more conscious than ever on whether they do or not, and you've been living this supercharged version of that. And getting to see you go away from the public eye and then come back into the public eye, having learned and grown and changed in all these ways, and then that strength giving you the chance to do something else was really amazing to get to witness. Thanks. So I, I, you know, I've never done this before. What do we do? <laughs> do we, uh, we talk, we have a conversation. I'm happy to just let you talk. Oh, um, <laughs> I do, uh, you know, clearly you two have a real rapport. I'm, I'm curious, what was your first meeting like? Go for it. <laughs> um, well, I remember I, when I first heard about this potential project, I, I'd always admired Taylor from afar. I knew she'd written all her own songs since she was 12 years old, and I knew that she was, you know, at the head of her music and her business, and I thought, wow, she must have gone through unimaginable levels of pressure and scrutiny to have this extraordinary 15-year career with all of that stuff. And um, when we first met, Taylor immediately wanted to talk about narrative structure and documentary film. We connected very easily as storytellers, I feel like, and we talked about ideas, we talked about how, we talked about documentaries we liked and that we didn't like. I remember you saying that you didn't like documentaries that felt like propaganda, and I was thrilled to hear that because I feel the same way. Um, and we talked about how you were really interested in doing something that wasn't like a lot of pop star documentaries, something that felt really raw and intimate and real, and you really wanted to give me space as a director to bring a perspective to the project, and that was such a gift for me. So I remember just, you know, storytelling the bat and how exciting that was. I remember the same thing. Um, you know, I think she, she puts it in a really beautiful, eloquent, articulate way, but I just really like, I like, I watch a lot of TV, I watch a lot of documentaries, <laughs> I watch a lot of movies, um, and I'm a fan, and I'm a fan of, of what she had done. Um, I really want to say thank you to Lisa at Netflix for, um, for really kind of showing me Lana's work. Um, Lana's work before um, she worked with me, um, a film called After Tiller was one that I, I, I thought that the way that she was so artfully um, maneuvered through such a, such a touchy subject with such... Um, such emotional intelligence. That that was what made me such a fan. And I just really wanted to, you know, talk about your work. I feel the same way. And in fact, when I heard that Lana was uh, directing this film about you, I thought, what a perfect person to, to make this film. And I told you that when I called you. <laughs> um, I am curious about um, the, the working relationship you guys had, and how did you how did you negotiate that? Did you were there ground rules or? I mean, there were really ground rules. You were very open from the beginning, and I think you see that in the film. And um, it, it was it was just a matter of like when we could get together. But it was a lot of filming for me. My favorite parts were probably filming you in the studio, getting to see your creative process, 
It's a really intimate space, and I know no one filmed you in the studio before. Um, so that was probably my favorite thing that we filmed. But similarly, even the interviews, when we first met, you hadn't done press, I think, for almost three years. So I remember it was a big deal to do that first interview. And um, I think that we just, yeah, had a really easy rapport. I could talk a long time about anything. Um, and it was just exciting that things actually really shifted in your life during the period of time that we were filming. I completely agree. Um, having someone in the, in the studio when I'm writing is something I've never done before because I just, I didn't, I didn't want to know if it would stop me from, you know, feeling like I could come up with ideas and feeling like I could throw things out. And there's, there's so much, um, you know, ridiculous sounding ad-libbing that you do when you're writing songs. It's like, it's like so much of it sounds ridiculous until it sounds all right. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, and a lot of a lot of that that time, you know, I just always refuse to have any cameras in the studio when I'm writing because I just feel like, you know, what if I what if I can't do it? And then you've wasted a day, and then I've wasted another creator's time, I've wasted a producer's time, I've wasted a co-writer's time, and I can't write if somebody's there. But I think one of the things about you um, is that for so much of my life. Um, in the public eye, when I get sad or upset or humiliated or angry or go through a really horrible time, I feel people lean in with like this hunger. And you never did that to me. And that was what made me feel okay about feeling sadness, anger, humiliation around you. Because I felt like when I got sad, you did too. And so it made all of that all right. It didn't make me feel like Oh, she feels like she's uh, got a good part for her movie now. And I really want to thank you for that. Yeah, there's, um, there's such a strong theme of, of approval and you know, needing to make others happy. I'm wondering um, if you could talk more about that as, as one of the... the um, driving themes, and also, did you were there certain things that you really wanted to to capture thematically in this film? Well, so much stuff emerged over time. I mean, I think the theme of approval is something that so many people relate to. We all want people to like us, and I think girls, especially growing up in this culture, are taught that other people's approval is of paramount importance to their self worth. So, you know, the voices saying, "Was I nice enough?" Are they mad at me? These are questions I and every woman I tell ask themselves at least a dozen times every day. And, uh, you know, I've seen you experience that, but in this international stage, but then coming to this completely new understanding of your relationship to other people's approval was really inspiring and empowering. Saying, you know, I'm still going to be a nice person, but it's okay if people are a little uncomfortable sometimes. Felt like a really huge leap. And so yeah, I connected a lot to that for sure. And even to the moment and the scene where you discuss with your team and family, the political endorsement, it's so powerful because of the politics, but also because it's watching you with people who love you the most in the world say, you know, I love you, you're looking out for my best interests, but I <laughs> to disagree and do things my own way. That's a moment that so many of us experience in our lives at one point or another, and I thought it was so powerful as this coming-of-age event um, and the profound ending of this multi-layered process you went through to lead you to that decision. I really don't think I could say anything better than so. <laughs> she did. You know, she'll answer something. I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But the that scene is so. It's such a. Um, a crucial part of the film, and I, I, I think that it's so, uh, so incredibly moving. I'm wondering, like, how do you, how do you feel at this point watching that in this film? Um, I, I remember feeling like, um, you know, my, my, my dad has always just been so terrified about my safety since I was a kid. That's always been it, you know. The fact that my job in, entails um, standing on a stage and 
you know, there are so many threats we get on a daily basis that nobody ever knows about, and we try to keep that stuff under wraps as much as possible, but my, my dad is the one who has to see it. And so, for him, it was all about, like, what is, what does this do? What are, what's, what could happen to you if you, if you say this? If you say this, are you, am, am I potentially, um, is my daughter in danger? And it, it, is this the moment when I should have stopped it from happening? I think my parents, you know, um, I had been speaking to my mom so much about it. And, you know, she went through the trial with me in Denver, which was, you know, um, a really horrible um, experience to have. And I had all the privilege in the world and, and, a, and you know, financial support and the ability to pay for a brilliant lawyer. Um, and that is, that is, you know, I won that trial, but without all that, I don't know what would have happened. Um, so it, it taught me so much, and, and it was the women in my life who were there every single day going into court. And, you know, that, that for me was a very, you know, we, our political opinions and our, our opinions are defined by what, what happens to us in our life. So that was one of the things that happened to me in my life, and seeing what was happening in my home state. And then it all culminating and having to have a conversation with um, people who have been so wonderfully supportive of me um, throughout my entire career, feeling so afraid for my safety. And, um, and so it's, it's a really real moment for me to watch that back. Um, you know, there's such a, a, a timeliness to this film. Um, and, <laughs> And I think that um, when I watch this film, I feel like it has the, the possibility to make such like real impact. Um, like I want all young women everywhere to see this film because I feel like that's that's the power of the film. And it's you. I mean, I, I really, I want to thank Taylor again because it takes a lot of bravery to do this. This isn't something you had to do. You've dealt with more public scrutiny than almost any private individual. This is not something you had to do, and it takes a lot of courage, and I think it's because you understood the comfort and the inspiration that it would bring to people, especially young women. So it's, it's just really bold of you to be willing to make this kind of film with me. So I really want to thank you for that. Um, we unfortunately have to start wrapping things up, but um, Taylor, I have one last question for you. Um, I am, I'm a notorious cat lady, as I know you are. Um, so, of course, I want to know where Meredith, Olivia, and Benjamin are at this very moment while the world premiere of your film has been happening. Well, they're right in the back row, just right up there. No, they're not here. I'm sorry. I wish they were, but unfortunately they don't care about anything that I do. Um, but I love them so much. Um, you know, Detective Olivia Benson, and Dr. Meredith Gray, and Benjamin Button. The loves of my life. Thank you for asking about them. I will tell them they will not care, but I do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here.